Good morning. I'm going to say a few things today about hopes and fears. And what's prompted this? Well, I think at the moment there's a lot of uh, fear around about Covid and there's a lot of hope perhaps, or at least some hope, that Covid will stop, will go away, will be uh, sorted out or whatever. But there's all sorts of other uh, fears and hopes as well. Like for example climate change. What's happening to the earth at the moment? What's happening to the world that we live in? Seems to me like we've plundered the world. The human race has plundered the world and that plundering is still going on and there are a few people it seems fighting to stop that to change that so as well as covid i have a lot of hopes and fears in relation to just the future of this planet and another fear which is beginning to become quite strong in me at the moment is fear of old age. I guess I'm not that old in modern terms, mid to late 60s, but it does feel like um, you know, old age is uh, just around the corner maybe. And of course I've seen the sufferings that old age can bring to lots of people friends of mine, relatives of mine, who've all experienced it. And I remember Bhante Sangharachita, my teacher, once saying when he got to the point of experiencing some of the distresses of old age, and he realised then and he said that um, he'd put a lot of effort into preparing himself for death but he hadn't at all prepared himself for old age and so old age was a big shock. I think for many years the mystery of death has been part of my <coughs> the mystery of death has been part of my practice and the fear of death has been an important part of my practice. How to deal with that? I've spent a lot of time uh, reflecting on death, being aware of my mortality and just wondering when the time comes how I'm going to cope with that. But right now it seems important to reflect on old age and how I will deal with that in the next years. But I'm not going to just talk about how to prepare for old age because some of you listening won't feel that as something which is imminent. Maybe you're half my age or whatever. Maybe you have other fears, other hopes. And I'm thinking especially if you're younger than me or a lot younger than me, then climate change may be a very real um, fear or hope. You know, if we think that the planet is on the way to extinction, um, then that is a, a real fear. You know, you may wonder whether you even have a future because we don't know what the planet will be like in 10, 20, 30 years. Although having said that, there are many, I think there are, there are many um, hopeful signs of change in that direction. A number of things I've been looking into recently have led me to think that. In particular the idea of rewilding. I'm not going to go into that in detail now, there's not time. But if you want to, look up rewilding or read the book Wilding. Very, very interesting challenging but 
hopeful I think about the future of the planet. But all our hopes and fears, um, what are they based on? In a way, they're just uh, fabrications um, connected with a future which hasn't happened yet. That future may just be next week, or it may be something even closer than that, or it may be some years off. But either way, it's unknown. So our fears about the future are based on something which we don't yet know because the situation hasn't yet arisen. And our hopes too. We hope for positive outcomes to things, to COVID, to climate change, to old age, to death even. We hope for positive outcomes. But in a way, our hopes as well as our fears are based on fabrications. They're a kind of wishful thinking in a way. We want this and we want that and our fears are expressions of we don't want this and we don't want that. I think in a way our Buddhist practice eventually takes us beyond hopes and fears because the hopes and fears are really based on attachments, aren't they? We're attached to ourself, attached to our body, attached to the idea of well-being and good health for ourself. We're attached to the idea of, well, I was going to say material prosperity, um, but at least material um, or have, having enough of our material needs, you know, having our basic needs fulfilled. We hope for these things and we fear their loss. But if we look deeply into our experience, our experience of attachment to ourself, then we will find that there isn't really very much to be attached to. If you go back some months to some talks I did, I can't remember when it was, maybe in April, May or maybe June, um, I did a series of three talks, I think it was, called Who Do You Think You Are? which was a way of looking at our notions of self, what those notions were based on, is there anything really there which we can call ourself? And the conclusions of those talks was, no, there isn't anything actually that we can solidly say is ourself. Things keep changing, don't they? Our idea of self slips away like a river continually moving. So if there's um, attachment to self and our hopes and fears are based on that attachment, um, does that mean if we let go of self, if we let go of these attachments, does that mean that, that we no longer have hope, we no longer have fear? Well, we can all relate to not having fear. We probably think, what a relief that would be not to have fear in our experience. But what about hope? Surely we don't want to uh, fall into hopelessness because there is no hope. No. We don't want to fall into despair or hopelessness. But what we can do is we can develop such things as metta, compassion, equanimity. Sometimes I've found myself in a situation of sending metta, well wishing to someone who I know is um, seriously ill maybe they're close to death. And part of that well wishing has been that something like, may they be well, whether they recover or not. Now that might sound like a strange thing to say. But 
It may be that someone might recover from a serious illness, but actually their quality of life may not be very good. So it's not that I wish them to die, but it's that I wish them well-being, whether they recover or not. So that means I have at least some faith in the idea of an existence after death, or at least that consciousness continues. I'm getting really into the topic for another whole talk here, is there life after death? And I'm virtually out of time now for this talk. Um, so that is another topic. But I think metta and compassion and equanimity, they do take us beyond the, um, the attachments of hopes and fears. And they are by no means hopeless. And they are by no means fearful. They are instead based on an awareness that actually there is no self to hold on to and therefore there are no other selves to hold on to, other beings. But at the same time, there is existence, there is our perception, there is our experience of existing, even if that existence is just a flow, a process. So... We look for well-being, we look for metta, for light and warmth, we look for compassion, we look for alleviating our own suffering and the suffering of others in our experience right now. I'll maybe say more on this topic of hopes and fears in my next videos, but I need to stop now.